I met Secretary Marsha Barbosa outside her office at the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. She was recently appointed in March after decades of teaching and researching physics and defines herself as a female trailblazer in Brazil's science community. Secretary, Latin American countries typically and historically haven't really invested much when it comes to science and technology. What is Brazil doing right now or hoping to do? And how can that help an emerging economy like Brazil? Well, we are doing things. And even during the pandemic, we have a number of scientists working really hard in the country, not only to identify the virus, to, to build a vaccination, to build the infrastructure. So but now we are back means that we can do that in wide open. We don't need to hide in our laboratories to speak about the truth of science. And that's a great opportunity, because then we can build in the answers. So science is going to be present to be in the challenge of the country. Let me give you an example. We need to have a new industrialization in the country. The country nowadays cannot produce many medications, including aspirin. That's unthinkable in a country like Brazil. So the scientists are working so we can build the way between the lab, where you know to do things, and the public to receive the goods. And that is the challenge I'm, I'm facing, to identify the fields, to put together science entrepreneurs, and the sources of the, the government and build this path. Can that path build jobs and bring people out of poverty if you build this industry? Obviously. One of the projects we are doing right now is very simple. That means go to the communities. Like we have many communities that work with the natural resources and put technology in what they do. You're not doing, not saying to them, stop doing this because this is so simple. No, no, no. We are looking to the treasure they have. We have a plant called acai, that's a plant that have, in addition to be the wonderful ice cream, I recommend everybody to try it, also have a number of properties that we can use. And this population have to be involved. It means qualifying the jobs we have, creating more job, jobs, empowering the communities so we preserve the region. When you look at young Brazilians, is there a curiosity and interest in moving into these fields? Or is that a challenge that you're trying to address and drawing more young people in to math and science and innovation? We need to work on that because that's not only a problem in Brazil, by the way. The young people are much more interested in fields like your field, be a journalist, a movie star. So we have to convince, since the young age, what it means to be a scientist. So something we are doing, there is a project, particularly design, that you put in a lot of money from, from the government to go to girls and to motivate young girls to go to the science, technology, and math fields. We have to start in the early age, so they get the passion. I will start when I give talks to, I, a lot, I give talks to five years old kids many times. So I, I tell them, being a scientist is like being a detective. You look for the evidence, you look for the emotion, and wow, we discover things. So sometimes these students, they send me from the WhatsApp, they taped, wow, I am a scientist. It's this feeling I want to see in every young person, even when they don't go to science. They, want, they have to challenge themselves. So we are working in this direction as well. What have you experienced as being a woman in STEM? You're like a unicorn, right? You must have seen and heard and experienced so much to hold you down. Well, I, I come from an underprivileged family. What's some, something that in the, my time as a student was already 
a no person at university. So when I went to at my first class in physics, from 40 students, only four girls, and I asked the only one coming from the public system. So I look, wow. And they all, you know, this private school made you a genius. You think you're a genius. So I was the only one not thinking I was a genius. But I, I have the perception that why I'm alone here? Where the other people coming from the public system? Where there are the girls? And I would not accept that I should not be there. I should be there. So I decided that I would apply for any position as a representative of anything. So people say the representative of the union of students, I was there, representative of any position. And I realized because I was a woman from an underprivileged family, I was transparent. But instead of feeling, oh, I am transparent, I realized Transparent people have a lot of power. You can tell things, you can be transparent in what you're doing, tell what other people were doing, and they never think you were, because you're so nothing that they will never realize until it was too late that you were the power creating the network. So ever since I realized this power of being transparent, of being this person nobody expect anything from you, that I could face the situation, make my master, my PhD, go abroad, and abroad was some experience because I am a Latina that looks like a Latina. In Brazil, you, you can have any face, but I, I was obviously a Latina in a field that they don't even have women around. And instead of using the uniform, you understand that this is a secret. We scientists, we have uniforms. We have to look like we don't pay attention in dressing codes. That's because you're so occupied in doing your science that you don't pay attention. So I decided I'm going to wear mini skirts, okay? Because people would say, no, wear mini skirt, wear, you know, a jeans, a white blouse, something that they, you think you are a man, and they you leave you alone. I said, I don't want to be left alone. I want to be the bug in the middle of the room telling them, here is a woman that's not afraid of being a woman. And since then, and imagine, I like to say that I'm young for many, many years, since then, this has been a way to say to every single girl, you are welcome. You can be here. And do you think circumstances have improved for women in STEM, young girls, in your time? Have you noticed it change for the better? There is a change that, thanks to the fact that many women in the past, you know, the International Union for Applied Physics, since 2000 is fighting for the issue, actively fighting for the issue, what means that people start to think about it. And when you think about it, you face the situation and you bring results. For instance, the first thing we did, we looked at the union and said, well, we need more women in the committee. We cannot fund a conference if there is no woman speaking or woman in the committee. But in policies that help to give light to the problem. And it would be very easy to just relax at some point, I said, it's over, but it's not over. Each time you advance, you have more things to advance. And now I can see the young girls more aware of the situation. They you do things that my generation would not, never think about, complain about a professor that said something that was unacceptable regarding uh, a woman in the room being less intelligent. In my generation would listen and be quiet. This new generation will fight. And this fight is thanks to the ones that fought in the past. We have to realize that each generation advanced, but that doesn't mean that you have to relax. You have to go to the next step, to the next step, until we are 50 and 50. Secretary Barbosa, thank you so much for joining us on America's Now. Thank you for letting me speak. <laughs>